Nadine Dorries is a Tory MP, although you might not have known that since she's been absent from the House of Commons for months. According to Hansard, the last time she spoke in Parliament was July last year. Instead, she's been busy burnishing her new career as a presenter on Talk TV. Last week, though, she suddenly announced she was resigning from the Commons. Was it because she detected a conflict of interest between being an elected legislator while drawing a salary from Rupert Murdoch? How noble. Or did she maybe feel a twinge of guilt about getting paid taxpayer cash for a job she wasn't really doing anymore? No, it's because she wasn't given the title Baroness and a cushy seat in the House of Lords. The story begins in September last year when Liz Truss became Prime Minister. Dorries, queen of the Johnson loyalists, quit her cabinet positions, supposedly because Johnson would give her a peerage. But things didn't go as planned. When Downing Street published Johnson's resignation honours list last week, Dorries, as well as seven other proposed peers, wasn't on it. So what happened? Last night, she gave an exclusive interview to her talk TV colleague Piers Morgan, where Nadine Dorries laid out her theory. In this clip, you'll hear her refer to the House of Lords Appointments Commission, or HOLAC, the independent body that scrutinises nominees for peerages. As this list goes into number 10, number 10 hand it over to HOLAC. HOLAC do the vetting, that's police checks and HMRC checks. Then they hand that list back to number 10. Number 10 then hand that list over to the king. So what happened was, HOLAC said to number 10, this MP needs to make a public announcement that she will stand down within six months of being put back to you on this list. Nobody from number 10 communicated that to me. Boris found out about this and had a meeting with Rishi last week. Six months had elapsed since the vetting had been done. Why Downing Street waited six months, I've no idea. Six months elapsed. Boris said to, to Rishi Shunak, you just need to ask for the re-vetting, which would take a matter of days. Rishi used very weasel words he said to Boris Johnson, and that's, that's the only thing Boris asked him to do, he said to Boris, whatever list Holak sent back to me, I will sign off. Boris left that meeting with the impression that James Forsyth, who is Sunak's political secretary, was going to ask for the revetting for the list to come forward, and then Rishi would sign it off. But of course, Rishi was using those words because he knew a situation had been engineered, i.e. the information Holak had given had not been not being communicated to me, and therefore my name would not be on the list because I hadn't done what Holak asked number 10 to ask me to do because nobody had asked me to do it. Holak have let it be known that they did not support some of the people put so forward. So they couldn't because they couldn't support the people who'd been put forward because we hadn't done what had been asked of But that's the only done. reason that they wouldn't yeah. support it. Who, but, it wasn't who a not? failure of any of the vetting. No, 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 no absolutely not, no. Right, so who and do you... there were six people on this So this list. sounds like a sort of murder mystery plot that you'd have at a friend's dinner party. Who, who's the murderer here? Who has stopped you, Nadine Doris, from joining the House of Lords, do you believe? The Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak. We don't know what really happened. After all, Doris might be right. There's a first time for everything. But it is a bit weird. But that's because as far back as November last year, it was reported that there were going to be issues with Johnson nominating sitting MPs, just like Nadine Dorries, for peerages. Back then, the National reported this. The move has sparked controversy in Whitehall as MPs cannot also sit in the House of Lords. In order to accept their peerages, the four Tories would need to resign their seats in the Commons, therefore triggering by-elections. However, Johnson is said to have asked the MPs nominated for peerages to delay taking them up so the Tories do not have to fight by-elections. At the time in the House of Lords, Conservative peer and Cabinet Office Minister Lucy Neville Rolfe said this, It is a common law principle that members of the House of Lords cannot sit as MPs and as such would need to stand down from the House of Commons. The government are aware that there is some precedent for individuals delaying taking up their seats, but this is a limited and largely related to their personal circumstances. It's also worth pointing out that there were a lot of people unhappy with the idea of Dorries getting a seat in the Lords for a different reason. In September last year, Deadline reports that SNP MP John Nicholson, who sits on the Digital Culture, Media and Sport Committee, was seeking to block a peerage for Dorries. That's after he accused her of misleading Parliament over these remarks in a committee hearing. One of my favourite Channel 4 programmes is Tower Block of Commons. I think we've chatted about it before. You were on it as a young MP oh, yes. in the South Acton <laughs> estate, being sent to see how the other half lived. I'm just curious. Yeah, but then I discovered later they were actually actors. 
Oh, were they? <laughs> I did not know. The MPs or the... <laughs> no, 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 the, the people in. So I did Channel 4 production, actually. Really? Yes, and, yes. Yeah, right? and so yes, the yes. parents of some of the people, of the boys in that programme, actually came here to have lunch with me and contacted me to tell me, actually, they were in acting school and that they weren't really living in a flat and they weren't real... Um, I had life tomorrow. Yeah, they're actually oh. actors. And even... Um, if you remember, there's a pharmacist or somebody that I went to see who prepared food. She was also um, paid in an actress as well. It's important to remember that Doris was culture secretary during that hearing and also busy trying to privatise Channel 4. An investigation into Doris remarks then took place with the committee reporting this after she resigned from her cabinet post. We did not find either Dory's original claims or the clarifications to be credible and have seen no corroboration of her claim that Channel 4 and Love Productions used actors in a reality television show. In contrast, the detailed investigation carried out by Channel 4 gives us confidence that her claims are groundless. We are concerned that Miss Dory's appears to have taken an opportunity under the protection of privilege to traduce the reputation of Channel 4. Had Miss Dory's remained Secretary of State driving a policy of selling the channel, we may have sought a referral to the privileges committee. Interesting. But let's get back to that interview from last night. Doris went on to explain why, according to her, Sunak blocked her peerage. Number 10, I know why they did this. They did this because they wanted to avoid a by-election. If they'd worked with me, we could have had this by-election, a time which was suitable to them, maybe after the autumn statements come out when hopefully there'll be some good news. We could have worked together, but instead... Did, did Rishi Sunak lie to Boris... Put up a wall of silence okay, I get it. and did, stopped it happening. Did Boris lie... Did Rishi Sunak lie to Boris Johnson in their meeting? So what I've said to you is he used sophistry, some very clever words. I will sign off whatever list Holak could give to me, knowing full well that my name was not, and mine and other names were not on that list because they had engineered that those names were not on that list by not informing us the request made by Holak to number 10, informing us what we needed right. to do Are you to sure the list. Boris Johnson didn't take you off that list? Uh, uh, 100%. It wouldn't be the first time he's, uh, what, he's no. stiff people. No, I, d well, I don't think that's true. Well, it is true. Well, I, d I don't believe it is. My, I can only speak as my experience of Boris Johnson, those I know, and it's it's a very positive experience. And you're certain that he I wouldn't have taken you off the list? Absolutely certain. I think there's a simple explanation here, in fact. As usual, Johnson tried to bend the rules against giving peerages to sitting MPs by trying to get a special deferral for the MPs he'd nominated. And someone decided that wasn't possible. He was trying to bend the rules a little bit too much. So those nominations didn't go through. It's not against Nadine Dorries as some kind of conspiracy. It's just a boring story about procedure and a former prime minister who doesn't think the rules apply to him. Nothing new there. But Doris drew a different moral from the saga. How upset are you at now not getting this honour you assumed you were going to get? Not joining the House of Lords, not being Baroness at the end of all this? Do you know what? I'm broken hearted, not just for me, but for everybody who comes from a background like mine, who in today's world don't have the ability to climb ladders that they used to have years ago, who, who struggle to aspire because they feel that it just isn't worth being aspirational, it isn't worth working hard, because they see others from different backgrounds who take the spoils. And it kind of breaks my heart because that, that's what this story is. So there's an individual who's been a sitting MP for 18 years, 13 of them have been with the party of government, and three of them have been including ministerial posts, not to mention someone who consistently voted in favour of austerity, and also someone who backed Liz Truss for Prime Minister, only for her to put the economy in the bin and set it on fire. That's who you see there, pretending to feel sorry for people who can no longer climb the ladders her party pulled away from them. Ridiculous. One of the most insane pieces of TV I've seen in 2023. Michael, Nadine Dorries is talking about aspiration and uh, meritocracy, and yet she's talking in truth about an unelected second chamber where people are chosen on grace and favour and whether or not they can climb a slippery pole. It's, it's the complete opposite of meritocracy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, she also went on to sort of say how Boris Johnson was actually, you know, someone who'd pulled himself up by the bootstraps. Piers Morgan pointed out he went to Eton. She said, on a scholarship, on a scholarship. I don't find her account completely implausible, but I suppose it is undermined by the fact that, well, it seems like a lie, which she told to the, the culture committee. I mean, that seems pretty significant. And then to say that 
Boris Johnson is not the kind of guy that stiffs people over. I mean, this is not someone who is speaking with much credibility. <laughs>